So Roblox has released a lot of updates in 2024 from both the studio engine to the platform itself. And by a lot, I mean really a lot. So there is going to be a lot of things that I need to overview in this video. So I recommend that you guys have it playing in the background. But anyways, as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel and also happy new year to everyone. But let's get into the video. So starting off with the features that happened in the first quarter, we had a live scripting release, which was an update which made it that scripts were updating in real time from multiple people editing them. Then something called a window context queue, that are improvements on user experience. Then a bunch of stuff with the open cloud API, which was created to make third party tools interact seamlessly with Roblox content. Later we had an update to packages with the package version description. And it's something that I went over in my video too. And right next to that we also have a script difference window, which is there to basically overview changes from what was added or removed in different scripts in the package. And a really big update for GUI scripting was the path to D. And if the name isn't self-explanatory enough, with the path to the API, you are able to create and edit 2D visual splines to create, for example, UI elements animations and effects like graph editors. And yet another great thing was the audio API, which if you are a fan of my channel, you are probably familiar with, since I already made few videos on it. And do you know what else I made a video on? The pausing physics feature, which was also added this year. And Roblox also made a lot of improvements to the creator hub, like for example, the experience activity history, which is basically like a logging feature that we can overview under the monitoring tab. And while we are in the creator hub, there was also an update about the staff articles in the dev forum, where they basically just launched a new dev forum category. And hold on, why is this the dev forum? This one was under the creator hub, but anyway. But it was basically just to categorize articles from Roblox staff. And we also had different analytics updates, like the session retention, meaning for how long the player has played your game for. And also a pretty minor update where the notifications in the creator hub. But let's actually maybe move away from it now. And if it comes to AI updates, we had the full release of the code assistant, which is basically an AI tool that you can use to, for example, generate code in game or give you advice on a specific system. It's something basically like ChatGPT, except it's in studio. And later we also had the texture generator that I also made a video on. But moving on, something else that I didn't strictly made a video on, but mentioned in my commentary videos was the UGC program being made available for everyone. And this update, a lot of people didn't really like it. And from different features, we also have the avatar auto setup that at some point I should probably make a video on. But it's a tool that automatically can rig your avatar, as well as cage, segment and skin it with only one press of a button. Then we have different updates if it comes to communicating with different players, like for example the automatic chat translation, as well as a translation support for non-English experiences. And I don't really think I need to overview what it is. So anyway, then we also had an update about immersive advertisements that nobody has been really even using. But do you know what people have been actually using? Removal requests and rights manager. This was a tool very useful for for example UGC creators to request different item takedowns if for example somebody copied their UGC item. But at first the system was flawed and highly abused. But moving on to a quality of life improvement, which was the auto reconnect. And this feature basically just automatically reconnected you to experiences during updates. Updates. Because previously, if you have updated a game, people will just get kicked out and have to rejoin manually. And have you ever gotten a notification about a game telling you that, hey, you have new daily quests in this RPG game? Because, well, I certainly have it. But apparently, something that was kind of under my view that I didn't even know about was the experience notifications and its relative API. And if it comes to different APIs, we also had something called a captures API. And this one would basically be you being able to take a screenshot in Roblox and then share it to different people on WhatsApp, Twitter, Discord, and so on. And there was also Open Cloud Universes API, which was made it possible to read and update information about universes and places, where you were able to restart all of the servers in a universe. And this was mostly the equivalent of using the restart servers for updates feature. And let's not forget about monetization updates that were for example subscriptions within experiences, which again I haven't really seen being utilized or maybe I just don't play simulators enough. But moving on, developers were also able to sell plugins and later models with real world currency. And with this one, I remember a lot of people being mad about Atmos plugin costing what was it, 50 USD for just few skyboxes. So yeah. And something that was kind of a content farm for me and the different Roblox developers were the updates to the game template. 
templates. And in this year, Roblox either overhauled the whole template or made a completely new one. And now moving to the second quarter of 2024. We got the new Studio UI interface, a bunch of updates to the previously mentioned packages, a material picker where you were able to basically just pick a material from a selected object, then a change to the image resolution cap, which was changed from 1K to 8K, so 8 times the resolution increase. And the Roblox has also introduced a new base materials to Studio, like the cardboard, carpet, roof shining, clay roof tiles and so on. Later there was an update with the immersive mode for virtual reality. But again moving on. We had improvements to the data structure in the memory store with something called memory store hash map. And this one is really useful for implementing for example a shared inventory, a live action house or for storing player metadata. And this also brought an update with the open cloud memory stores where you were able to use memory store endpoints outside of the Roblox's environment. Then Roblox made the constructive solid geometry or CSG API now available in published experiences. Then looking back at the immersive advertisements, we also got them with the video ad format and also an ability to report them. And at that time we also had an update with the sponsored experiences and ad manager, which basically just covered a lot of personalization and improvements. Then an update about the migration to shorelines and old water deprecation. Now again for a pretty major update, we got the banning API with the ad account detection, where again I'm going to redirect you to my video which is going to be linked down in the description among any others, where I already made videos on covering this topic. And yet again going back to the creator hub, you could basically just overview groups in there and for example manage your group revenue and split profits per experience. And as you see in this example, you have a percentage of the shared profit and this one is pretty great because now you didn't have to manually calculate the percentage on how much each person from your team is going to be earning. And something that I would rather not talk about anymore were the AI generated avatars. <laughs> but I'm just going to, well, move on. And lastly we got the FPS, laser tag and the platformer templates. And that about is going to sum it up for the second quarter. So now, well, let's move to the third one. And this one I kind of did a really bad job in my last video where I have to apologize. I'm probably just going to private it whenever this video comes out. But well, let's I just say if you know you know but let me just say that the video structure idea that i had was pretty awful but anyway let's continue and start off with saying that we had an update to the open cloud engine api for lua execution where you were able to run lua code on roblox's server via the open cloud which allowed external tools to basically just have full access to the power of Roblox's engine. And then something called pseudo visualization modes where you are able to modify the viewport settings and then a pretty neat thing which was the surface appearance tinting which allowed you to change colors on your instances that use PBR materials. Then updates to the type solver which are basically improvements to the type checking. And yet another thing that I made a video on which was the gamepad emulator. So again if you are curious about it the video is going to be down in the description. Then we also got a bunch of updates to the constraint tool with something called a new dragger framework. And have you ever wanted to drag a UI element without having to script the whole dragging logic? Well, luckily for you, Roblox has released an instance called UI Drag Detector. And with this one you basically know the deal, so let's just move on. To an update called Activity History in Studio, which is the history of the collaboration activities and configuration in your game. Later the material generator got a full release, and also aerodynamic forces were introduced. And Roblox has also changed the compatibility lightning, which became the retro tone mapping. Then something about the DistroKid music integration, which was basically a lot of audio put into the Roblox's creator hub. And another update if it comes to the analytics, which was the optimization for low-end Android crash rates and several memory and CPU performance, which was an inside tab under the analytics seeing if, for example, a portion of your player base was playing on really low-end Android devices, just giving you an idea if you should be optimizing your game for that platform. And lastly, you had a tool for tracking custom analytic events in your experiences, which was just called, well, custom analytic events. And finally, we are at the end of the year recap, starting off with the accessory adjustment tool. That was basically used for layered and rigid accessories, meaning basically stuff like 3D clothing and, well, normal accessories. And here you could do different stuff like assigning a body attachment point to your accessory, edit the position, rotation and scale of non-layered clothing accessories 
accessories, as well as edit inner and outer cages for layered accessories too. Then we got a new script editor hover tips and user defined function documentation, which is a pretty great tool for making documented code. Then an update about the avatar merchandising, which was you being able to sell your outfit on the platform. And I can already say that this update is going to bring a lot of bad stuff to the catalog, but this is just my opinion. Then there were some improvements to the avatar item thumbnail, and this is the thing that made all of the, for example, packages look kind of different on the catalog. Since Roblox began this update with lighting improvements on the avatars. But anyway, and of course there is the pretty hyped update, which is the occlusion culling, which should have been on Roblox well, in my opinion, few years ago. But anyway, this was a pretty great update for optimization, basically not rendering any objects that were not currently visible to you, meaning your device didn't have to waste any computing resources to render geometry of an object that was for example hidden behind a different one. We also had an update on the channel tabs and UI gradient. And then well we had physics simulated characters, which is kind of surprising that they added it in 2024, while Roblox is basically a physics engine. Future Lightning was finally introduced to Android, and we also had a bunch of updates to the mesh and image API, which at first was only Lavin Studio. Then right next to the previously mentioned gamepad emulator, we also got a new VR emulator as well. And if it comes to using external tools for Roblox development, we also had Studio Luau 5 Sync Preview, in which we are able to for example use VS Code to edit Roblox scripts. And then later we got a script capabilities update. And Roblox has also started making an experiment which included sharing screenshots to profile. And something that was a little bit unnecessary in my opinion, which was the rebrand of groups to be communities. Like I like all of the updates of rehauling the whole group system, but the name change wasn't really again necessary. And something that was removed off of Roblox for a very long time was the game genres, which Roblox has magically were brought back. And also something worth mentioning were the open cloud API updates updates, where Roblox basically added more endpoints for easier management. Then we had few more new templates, like the platformer template and the home store template as well. And then two things that I recently made videos on, which were the feature packages, as well as the new Brav Deformer instance. And the last index on the list is the documentation available in Roblox Studio, where you are basically just able to access the documentation with improved tooltips in the script editor. And there is also a shorter forum post that I am also going to redirect you to, where Roblox basically made a presentation presentation from different people about all of the different updates that they have added in this year. Like something even like a longer grass. Pretty previously mentioned surface appearance hinting, where this showcase right here is actually pretty great. So yeah, but that's about going to mark the end of this video now. So if there is anything that I didn't mention in this video then please comment down below, I will probably just make a pinned comment. I was mostly just going down the roadmap updates and different dev forum and creator hub articles, as well as some other information from social media. But anyway, Anyways, so as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel, also check out my Patreon page, and again, Happy New Year, thanks everyone for watching, and see ya guys!